Happy Thanksgiving, growers. I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. I've got some updates and new grow light metrics to share. I'm particularly excited to tell you about Tent Heat Factor, THF. It's been a while. I hope that you and your plants have been doing well. Over the last year, I've been doing a lot of consultation work with commercial growers, helping facilities get set up, optimize their cultivation, and resolve pesky problems. I love working with my commercial clients. I've had a lot of successes and learned a whole lot, but my heart remains with the home growers. I haven't made a lot of new content for home growers over the last year, but that's about to change. I do keep up with home growers. Of course, through the Cocoa for Cannabis website, we have the best chat room for cannabis growers. And right now, we're gearing up for the next New Year's Grow Challenge. Get your grow calendar ready to start a grow with us on January 1st, 2025. I also do a weekly Zoom show, the Ask Dr. Coco Show. I answer submitted questions, invite listeners to chat or show their grows, and I show off my own grow. It's available to my Patreon subscribers, and it's only $5 a month to subscribe. It is the best way for home growers to ask me questions and get my personal input about your grow. And now, I'm here to announce a couple of new projects that I have underway. First, I'm currently working on a new educational video on the different types of horticultural LEDs. It's sponsored by Letistar and sets out to answer growers' most important questions about LEDs. Second, I've been working to develop new grow light metrics designed to help home growers better evaluate the cost and the heat associated with running grow lights, and I'm ready to tell you about them. Before I get to that, let me preview my new LED diodes video. A couple of years ago, I made the Science of Horticultural LEDs video. I explored the physics of how LEDs make light. Letistar, a premium horticultural diode manufacturer, provided a lot of the data that I used in that video. Recently, they reached out and offered to sponsor a new follow-up video. I want this new video to be directly useful to home growers, so I considered the questions that I've been asked since the last video. Grow lights often come with several different types of diodes, and home growers don't know what to look for or to pay attention to. So in the new video, I go through and discuss the common types of diodes used in horticultural fixtures. I organize it by spectrum. I review different UV, white, full spectrum, deep red 660 nanometer, and infrared or far red 730 nanometer diodes. For each type of diode, I review an example with data. I provide basic information about the diodes and the horticultural applications for that wavelength of light, whether the light contributes to photosynthesis, whether the light counts toward PPFD limits, whether the light does other non-photosynthetic plant signaling, why manufacturers include the diodes or not include them on grow lights. I'll discuss how I would use each type of light and what you should look for in a grow light or supplemental light. This project is in production now and will be released before the end of the year. I think a lot about indoor horticultural lighting and specifically how to measure and describe the features that are most important to us as home growers. The standard metrics are useful, but they don't always give growers the information we really need. I decided we needed some new metrics. Let's dive in. Most experienced growers are familiar with photosynthetic photon flux density, PPFD. It's the density of photons at a specific spot expressed in micromoles per square meter. There are PPFD targets and limits for efficient photosynthesis. The meters we use attempt to measure PPFD with varying degrees of success. And the PAR maps that I and others produce report PPFD values. Advanced growers understand PPFD when using their grow lights. But when buying lights or comparing lights, you need to understand PPF. PPF is just photosynthetic photon flux. It's not the density, it's rather the number of photons or the amount of light. It can be measured in different ways. For example, a total PPF can be measured in a device called an integrating sphere. I pioneered the term usable PPF, which I define as the number of photons or the amount of light that reaches the canopy. This is what I measure in my PAR and EPAR tests, and I argue it's the best representation of the performance of the fixture. Finally, when we take the amount of light in terms of PPF and divide it by the amount of power needed to generate that light in terms of watts, we get the photosynthetic photon efficacy, 
PPE. The PPE measures how many photons are generated or delivered to the canopy per watt of electricity consumed. It's measured in micromoles of photons per watt or joule of electricity. Photon efficacy number has been called the single most important metric for a grow light. Why? I think a lot of growers understand that less efficient grow lights will lead to higher power bills. But you may wonder, how much higher? And is that really the most important thing? But a higher power bill is not the only issue. It's critically important for home growers to understand less efficient lights also create more heat. So I developed new user-friendly metrics to illuminate both the costs and the heat associated with operating grow lights. Let's look at an example. Here is a sneak peek at the official EPAR test results for the latest version of the 2024 Mars Hydro FC6500 EVO. It performed incredibly well. Here in the 5x5 test area, the usable EPPF is 1,790.6 micromoles, and the photon efficacy is a stunning 2.52 micromoles per watt. If you look at a lot of test results, these numbers start to make some sense. For example, you'll know that a usable efficacy of 2.52 micromoles per watt is very impressive. But what does that really mean in terms of using this light? How much will it cost to run? How hot will it make your tent? Now, it's relatively easy to calculate the total heat output for any electrical appliance. The power draw in watts multiplied by 3.41 equals the heat output in BTU per hour. With 710 watts, the FC6500 will put out over 2400 BTU per hour. Commercial growers, anyone with dedicated AC systems, that's a helpful number. You can calculate the BTU that you will create, and then you ensure that your AC system is rated for at least that BTU. It's pretty straightforward. But most home growers don't have dedicated HVAC systems for their indoor tents. We grow in ventilated tents that use exhaust fans to exchange air with a lung room or other source. Home growers often have to work to keep the temperatures down to reasonable levels in their tents. Home growers don't need to know the BTU per hour. They need to know, how hot will this make my tent? I set out to develop a new heat metric that would answer that question for growers in typical ventilated grow tents. I call it Tent Heat Factor, THF. For the Mars Hydro FC6500 EVO, at 710 watts in a 5x5 space, the tent heat factor is plus 9.9 .9 degrees Fahrenheit. You can take the driver out, and that'll reduce the tent heat factor to plus 9.2 degrees Fahrenheit. The THF number is my estimate for how much hotter a typical grow tent will be when the light is on versus when the light is off. Every grow tent is different, but I wanted to develop a standard metric for a typical grow tent set up with an exhaust fan. The formula considers the power draw and the size of the tent. If you dim the light, the THF goes down. If you put this light in a 4x4 space, the THF goes up. The formula is based on personal experience, years of working with hundreds of home growers, and consultation with XYZ Vector, Berkshire Bud, and Smot Poker. Individual results will vary. THF will give you a good baseline to understand how efficacy and the size of different grow lights impacts how hot your tent actually runs. Of course, you also have to pay for electricity. We all understand that we will pay somewhat more if we run larger or less efficient lights. How much more, really? And is it worth paying attention to? To address this, I developed a new operating cost metric. It is the cost of electricity to run the light for an entire grow cycle. I assume four-week vegetation and eight-week flowering periods. And I use the U.S. average price for electricity, 16.5 cents per kilowatt hour. Assuming you pay the U.S. average, running the FC6500 EVO for a full grow at 100% power will cost $140.58. To more easily compare lights of different sizes, I also calculate an operating cost per square meter. Running the FC6500 EVO like this will cost $62.48 per square meter. 
These metrics make it easy to see how much more expensive it will be every single grow to run a less efficient light. And frankly, sometimes it might be worth it in terms of operating costs. But remember to also consider the extra heat. I'm adding these new metrics to the CocoaForCannabis.com grow light calculator. They will also be featured in my published test reports on all of my new grow light videos, starting with my updated review of the Mars Hydro FC6500 Evo. We just saw how well it performed. I ran it through tests in 5x5 and 4x4 areas. I'll take you through all of the test results and dive deeper into the new metrics. My new review video is in production now. I'll publish it soon. Stay tuned. Like most brands, Mars Hydro is running a big Black Friday sale. On MarsHydro.com, they have deals up to 25% off. And you get an additional discount when you use discount code CCFC. It's a great time to pick up the new FC6500 Evo that I'm reviewing. Or the FC4000 Evo, made for 4x2 tents, which I'm currently using. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, this whole season is a great time to do some shopping for your grow. Visit the deals and discounts page at CocoaForCannabis.com for information on my favorite sales. We usually stack our discount code on top of sale prices, so be sure to check out our complete list of discount codes before you shop so you can get double discounts. You get the best prices all year, and you help to support our work when you use our discount codes. Of course, it is also the season to be grateful, and I truly appreciate your support. I'm excited to start sharing new videos, new metrics, and more. In the meantime, I hope to see you over at CocoaForCannabis.com. After checking out the deals and discounts page, drop into the chat room where the Gromies are probably going to try to get you to sign up for the upcoming New Year's Grow Challenge. And if you have questions or want to chat with me, consider signing up for my Patreon. I do the Ask Dr. Coco show every Monday night exclusively for my Patreon subscribers. As I always say, grow your own, but don't grow alone. Let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, wishing you a happy Thanksgiving with a lot of grower love.